Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of DelphiCon 2023. We are celebrating 28 years of Delphi. Today in our presentation, we want to speak a little about NTFY for Delphi. How can you send cloud push notifications at zero cost? I will, take, I will talk a little bit about our agenda today. We will cover some topics on the origins of NTFY, who was its creator, and cloud notifications. We will have a brief revision of HTTP communication mechanisms, the structure of NTFY and how it works. We will take a look on publishers, subscribers, and topics, and subscription mechanisms. We will see how can you install NTFY for Delphi into your Delphi project. How can you to subscribe and publish using the library. And we will also we'll take a look on a brief utilities and examples and some minor details. Here's a little bit about me. My name is Samuel Rosa de Oliveira. I'm Brazilian. I'm currently living in Teresópolis, Rio de Janeiro. I am do, finishing my studies on Bachelor Information Systems. And you can contact me through my Medium account at samuel-ro.medium.com. It's my page in Portuguese, but you can use a translator or a Google Translator extension and see what I post there. This here is my GitHub if you have any interest. And I'm a Delphi developer and backend enthusiast at Aquasoft Technologies, where I engage with some interesting and exciting projects. So, let's speak about NTFY for Delphi. So first of all, let's speak a little about of the origins of NTFY and this, its creator and a bit on cloud notifications. What's the meaning of NTFY? NTFY stands for Notify in English and it's a free publisher or subscriber notification service based on HTTP. It allows you to send push notifications outside a device from any computer or cell phone. The creator was Philip C. Hacko, he's German, and he's a software engineer. And what's Notify for Delphi? NTFY for Delphi is a client library written in Pascal to interact with NTFY servers in Delphi. Likewise, it allows you to send and receive push notifications through NTFY servers. The creator was me. From now on, Whenever you hear me speaking about NTFY, I will not say the acronym, but I will say NOTIFY. So this, bear this in mind. A very common alternative for developers to work with notifications is using Firebase. Firebase Cloud Messaging is a very common alternative and allows you to send cloud notifications at no cost as well. But there has some drawbacks. We will see uh, very briefly how you can set up it and what are the steps which you have to utilize to implement Firebase on your project. You will firstly need to set up the FCM server. Then you have to set up the client app. Maybe you have to install an SDK, packages and libraries. And so relative complex. And furthermore, there is no way you can host your own server. This is the main drawback of Firebase. With Notify, things get changed a little bit different. In spite of offering this uh, consumption capacity or there is a limit, Notify is 100% free and you have no cost with it as well. There is no need to set up any server. It provides a simple HTTP client. You don't have need to install any SDK or packages and libraries. And it's extremely simple to implement. Furthermore, the main advantage is that you can host your own server. Philip's proposal is to keep the service free of any charge, although he may offer paid plans in the future as well. So you can take a look on their website at docs.ntfy.sh and there's a bunch of things there and documentations on how can you install and how you can use Notify into your project. Here we are going just to mention it very briefly, 
but there is an integration and examples of menus where you can explore a little bit and see what it does or what it offers. Here's a little bit on Philip Heckel. He's uh, his father of two kids. His project has already 9,000 stars, maybe even up, even more up to this presentation. Here's a, his GitHub. And uh, you consider leaving a star in his project as well. Okay. Exchanging data on the internet. Since the development of the HTTP protocol, many APIs were created to hurdle with internet communication problems. Below are listed some main ones. We have short polling, we have long polling, we have also server-side events and web sockets. Short polling, it's the technique of the client to request data to the server and fix the time cycles. This is quite ineffective and generates much traffic. It's pretty like that story, maybe all of you know, of the kid that stayed in the back of your car asking if you have arrived or not. Have you arrived? No. Have you arrived? No. And she stayed requesting this for a long, long time until we eventually arrived at the place. So this is quite irritating, right? And it's the same an analog or it's the same parabola. So the client stay requesting the server for data in fixed time cycles. Long polling, the client requests data to the server only once. The server holds the connection for transmitting data and it's better than short polling. But in this technique, the, the server cannot generate or deliver data by itself. It depends on the client firstly. So, the client sends a request to the server and the server does not close or does not send the header, the close header back to the client and he stays connected, he stays connected with the client for long periods. In server-side events, the client doesn't need to send any data to the server but only the server is meant to do it. It's useful for when you want to work with real-time updates like a news feed or something like Twitter and it's real useful if you want to send for example real-time updates like prices and so forth. In this in this case server the server only sends and the client stays connected to the server but it doesn't need the client doesn't need to send any request to the server before he can receive a, some data. Web sockets it's like the duplex connection. Maybe you have already known about duplex connection. And here, both the client and the server can exchange data. They can, this is very useful when you want to utilize for games or share documents and situations where you need instant interaction on both peers or the server. This is WebSockets. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look on how Not Notify works in understanding its mechanisms. So, this here is a brief chart on how Notify mechanisms, subscription and publishing mechanisms works. There is a server that stay up to store topics addresses and other publishers and other subscribers connected to the same topic. A publisher is any device and subscriber as well. They all will be looking to the same topic at the server. This topic is essential to we understand the further explanations. When a subscriber sends a GET request to the server, the server does not close the TCP connection. It kept open, does not send the subscriber the close header back. And this is long polling. The server stays sending updates to the subscriber through server push and whenever a publisher needs to post a new notification, he can send a post request to the same topic. So this here is the blueprint of Notify. 
there are a few servers in the spread in around the world some of them are in germany and others in other parts of europe and united states the first one it's in the usa the ntfysh the official they are in germany ntfyms.net another one in germany that is ntfy adminforce.deutsch da another in finland and another in france so now let's see a little bit about topic topics publishers and subscribers and some ways you can publish or subscribe so topics are url segments which comes after the server url the subscriber uses this URL to create long, the long polling connection and then exchange messages in real time. So here is the server address and after the server address you have the topic address. This URL segment is the topic. As they are public URLs, it's ideal that you create a difficult name to be guessed. Because anyone with access to your topic may be a problem, right? But later we can see also how there are some ways to implement secure topics by using credentials and avoiding this problem. To receive notifications, you have several ways to, to do it. You have the Android official app, you have the NTFY official web app, NTFY client, and also many other li client libraries written in different programming languages and in the case our library ntfy or notify for delphi it's the case so you can come here in their integrations and projects and here is our library written in pascal delphi so you can go there check it by yourself and here is our library the subscription mechanisms is very straightforward and simple as it is an http service we only need to execute a get request to the chosen topic followed by the url url segment that stands for the selected subscription mechanism there are currently four ways to subscribe one is using json the other is using raw string server-side events and web sockets and currently our library only supports JSON, but we are working to implement and develop another branches or another features so that these other options may be available as well. Okay, now we're going to see how can we install Notify for Delphi into our Delphi project. It's going to be right straightforward as well. I already prepared an application to demonstrate this. And I will just mention two ways you can install it into your Delphi project. And the installation is it's very, very easy, very straightforward. The first option which you may use, you are more familiar with, it's that you have to go to Hazonet's repository and clone the repository to your machine. After this, you have to add the source folder to your library path or search path. So you come to Notify for Delphi and the project will have some folders stru is structured and in, inside the source folder it's all the necessary Pascal files to the library to work with. And all, the only thing you have to do is to go inside your Delphi uh, project to go into options. Inside of options there is maybe language delphi and library here select the platform which you want to develop for and then come here and add the source folder inside of the library path it's very simple very very simple and uh, you can also select another ways to do so you can go to project uh, options if you only want to install to a specific platform and inside of project options, there is a Delphi compi compiler option. And inside of here, in the search path, you can go there and select the source folder and add into this place here. 
It's very, very straightforward. I will not demonstrate this here because I want to demonstrate another way to that you can install into your into your project. Okay, just remember the source folder is the only folder which you need to utilize this this library. The another way it's that I selected for this presentation it's using Boss Dependency Manager for our demonstration. So here I have a very simple console application project okay and uh, here is the folder for the project is in this location I already have boss installed on my machine the only thing I have to do here is to initiate boss I can do this with the command boss in it maybe all of you already know about this and he will generate it will act actually ask us some questions for our package name, our home page and versions. I will leave everything as default because this is not the goal of our presentation. In the, the source folder. After this commands he will generate the boss files to work with the dependency, dependency manager. And the only thing I have to do is to go into my library. I will go back to my library here and I can utilize this command boss install github.com slash isonodes notify for downline this is what I'm going to do here okay it's already installed we have here on modules that notify for Delphi is installed so it's going to request us to reload the project and after this after this reload, it's supposed that our notify unit it's already installed. Let's just take a look here. We can see that notify it's already installed here. It's pretty straightforward. No need to add on other things. So this is the command if you desire to take a note. And let's see how subscriber or publishing with our library Notify for Delph works. Let's take hands on with the library. To start receiving notifications, we just need to add Notify unit in the uses clauses and call the subscribe method followed by a topic and a callback function. This callback function will be fired whenever the client receives the survey event just need to add the notify unit and notify exposes a variable that we can interact with the library in the library's interface and here is the where it stays our very secret topic and follow this very secret topic we, we can inform the callback procedure okay this callback procedure we will receive an event of type I notify event which is an interface and inside this procedure we can create or we can pass or we can execute whatever callback we want I'll just demonstrate here in our presentation so as I said before notify exposes a variable which is called ntfy and uh, I will call that call it here after this I will call the subscribe method the subscribe method will need a topic for our demonstration and after the topic there is a anonymous procedure this anonymous procedure as I said we receive on one parameter of type e notify event and here we can pass or execute whatever or whatever command which we desire to be executed in our client Our very secret topic will be a very actually a very easy topic just for for this conference and for demonstrating on our presentation. I have already selected one which is called Delphi Con, which will be the topic where we are posting here. This Delphi Con, do you remember? This Delphi Con will become a public URL. So if you have access to Delphi Con and test there, you will see my message and you will also receive and you can publish on this topic but for our purposes 
I will select this very easy topic. And also to gain time, I will not post, I will not write anything here on the console because this will take me some time. I will just enable logs here so we can see the message displayed at the screen in the time when we receive it. Okay. I've, I have uh, omitted one step here just to demonstrate in a more succinct way, but I will explain it later why you need the why am I why am I speaking this so after this I would just run F F9 you will see that the connection was opened and now we are listening to incoming messages we just need to press Control F if we are in the console application to kill the process okay so as I said before Delphi con will be our topic our topic and I have another machine here connected in the same topic what I will do now is just to send a message from this machine and let's see if our library receives the notification I will type here um, Delphi con 2023 and I will just type hello everyone there hello guys okay now it's time to publish let's see if we have we receive this in our console application we receive it very cool right you have some properties of the message here I did not have all the fields because this message was a very simple one but as you can see we have an ID we have a Unix time, we have the type of the event, which is message, we have the topic where we are posting, which is Delphi Con, and the message we selected, hello guys, and the title of our message is Delphi 2023. I have it in, do you remember that I spoke before about the web client? Here is, it, here is our, our message too. I just access in the topic that I described it before in the official official server and uh, here I have selected the I have sent the message to from my Mac computer and I'm presenting this this presentation in a Windows machine I'm subscribed by the web client I received the message and my client application, my console client application, did also receive the message. It makes you to remember from the first slide that all the clients are connected and looking to the same topic at a server. This is quite interesting. The long polling connection, the HTTP long polling connection is on execution here because it's holding the connection and eventually the server is sending messages to keep the connection alive to the client. This will be running for over days, months, if I want to utilize for this purpose. And uh, that's it. That's very simple. Let me just send another message here. Uh, hello again. Hello again. And um, we love Delphi. All right. I think all of we love here. I will send again and we receive it that's it so and how can we publish messages in our application this example was just for subscribing okay so how publishing works it works just like the same way as subscribing you will need to add a notify unit in the users clause and create a new notification with the new method then you can call publish this is the blueprint okay just add the notify unit we already done this but now this time we are creating a new object by a facade by a facade method this method new method here it's a it's a facade which can you can create another object to, uh, from him 
in this here we just in this example here we just send a simple message like with a title and a message content and then we call it publish so let's see how we do this in our library well let me see if I'm listening everything okay mm. okay this time let's publish we will we will call the notify variable again this time we will call publish it's a function but before that we will provide a new notification object to this to this function here as we see we can call the new method the new method it's actually a facade and uh, then we can create many objects here we can create an API a notification an action or a config but for our purpose for we create a new notification we have to call this one so we will have we will need a topic which is Delphi con we will post a simple message with just a title and a message content this is going to be our title and the message content content okay uh, what can be our title I will put on the UTF 8 string here Delphi con 2023 and a simple message for us we love Delphi with a, sim with a simple heart is there yeah there's a heart here uh, then we can we just need to call publish this, this is all we need for publishing our notification we are expecting this notification to be displayed here in our subscription in our clients so if there is another client connected in this URL he will receive the same message so let's see if it works mm. it's taking a little longer than expected do you think I have problems with internet here oh uh, no it finally arrived uh, I think there was a problem with the server but here is our message Delphi con 2023 and uh, the emoji and the heart pretty simple this is everything what we can uh, demonstrate in the, in the simplest way of course there are other methods here there are many other options which which they are available by notify server but I will explain them very briefly you can take a look at the library in the Hazelnuts repository because there are many many options that you can you can test in your project for instance the library already pro I have already provided some small test cases which you can play a little bit like you can send simple messages actions and attachments headers you can work with simple emails, tags, icons, and URL attachments. I will explain them very briefly in the other slides. But summarizing, this is how we can publish and subscribe to our library. And now, just a few technical issues, uh, a few technical notes, actually. I have developed this library primarily in Indy, and uh, I didn't have in mind that this could be so much useful for another platforms such as Android or iOS and because of that a new branch is on development with Nash HTTP after the development on this branch has been completed I will release a new version of it that it's mainly on it's focused on net HTTP by default it's developed by default 
and you no longer will need to add two libraries that can that must be shared with your application i know that this is a drawback because i am a windows developer i'm not an ios or not an android developer and uh, i was primarily focusing on windows and that's why i choose Indy because it works pretty well i know that many of us or many of us or many of other Delphi developers may be criticizing me already because because of this and I should have actually done this in HTTP since the beginning but no worries I am working on the release on the development of this branch and we will soon have this option by default in our library actually I, I am finishing some tests the branch is right up here net HTTP you can choose by your own your own tests but I'm working to release the the fast as possible keeping the quality of the code and trying to maintain compatibility with other Delphi versions like older ver versions of Delphi well about the steps this is what happens Net HTTP can be implemented on any platform, but I'm the, I am on on progress to to release it, and Indy only supports Windows for the moment. Concerning the steps that I previously told that I have omitted, it's because you will have to share these two libraries in your application: the LibAI and SSL SSL AI 32. They are the open SSL that Indy needs to make the secure communication protocols and etc. For publishing only. For subscribing, you don't need to utilize these two libraries, okay? But as soon as the branch is been completed, the development of the branch has been completed, you only have to do it's one thing. For those who would like to use ND, they will have to go in this path and add a compiler directive in the project so the library can behave to utilize ND instead of NETCH HTTP. By default, the library will utilize NET HTTP, but if you want to switch to ND, you will have to provide this directive compiler in the project here you can go to project options let me remind here just just really quick project options building delphi compiler and then you can place this conditional define right up there project options building delphi compiler project Options building, Delphi compiler, and here conditional defines. I always struggle a little bit to find this this path, and here is where you can place the conditional defines. If you place like this, the library will behave to utilize Indy. If not, it will behave to utilize net HTTP by default. Okay. Of course, this has not been implemented yet. The default behavior for the moment to the release to the version 1.0.2 it's using indie but as soon as this branch is is finished in the development another release will behave completely different i'm working and uh, if you want to contribute as well for other features and things of the gender Feel free because this is an open source project. I hope this has been clarified. If you have any questions later, we can call a little bit more. So let's see a little bit on a little bit on utilities and examples and some minor use cases of the library. Okay. Some utilities. You can make several operations with Notify. Not all of them are currently implemented in our library, 
Notify for Delphi. But most of them are. In general, you can use Notify for Delphi for the following operations. You can send simple messages with it. It's quite straightforward. I said this a lot of times here. Uh, view actions. You can utilize action buttons in the notifications. These action buttons are simply buttons that redirect the user to a certain place or a certain website. And uh, these actions, view, view action buttons, they do this. If you click the button, you will be directed to a certain page or certain site, or you will open a, an application and you will see something. So this is these are view actions. HTTP actions, there are they are actions that execute HTTP requests. So for example, if you have a button and there is an action HTTP action in this button, you will have to make an HTTP request because this is an action, HTTP action button. They execute HTTP requests. We can also send files with Notify for Delphi. You can send uh, images, you can send whatever type of file do you, you, you want. The files are stored in the server for up until maybe three hours or something. Yes, three hours, which is enough time for the user to download it. You can send simple emails. The email is attached with the IP address to avoid abuse. You know, you can add or you can attach icons or tags in the notifications with our library, and you can also send URL attachments. These URL attachments are any data type like videos or images and so forth. There are some few use cases that it's useful. The first example are login alerts. Let's suppose that you have a computer, a machine, and you want to be notified whenever you have a login in that machine. So if you've been hacked or if you have been, if someone has access to your computer, you may receive a notification that someone has access to your computer. And uh, login alerts are a very common example that notifications are useful for. There's this other point, it's the famous example that you forget how many spaces are in your disks and there's, you can receive an alert of how many space or how many avoided space still remains and notifications can be also useful for this. There is a very specific feature that it's interesting for when you are deploying a project and you want to be notified about the deployment of that project after deployment is finished or it's over or when your website or another project has been successfully deployed, you can use GitHub workflows and uh, receive the notifications that it has been completed. You can execute rem remote commands with this kind of software and like for example make remote commands to make a big a big cap or turn off your machine the sky is the limit and you have to use the imagination here we also have low battery alerts this is very very common right and also and also we have health check logs that they are utilities that linux has to you know and you under, understand or be notified by your tasks in Linux. I said before that you have the hosting option, self-hosting option, because notify differently from any other notification service allows you to host your own server. The message manager works just the same way like the official server and you can also create secret topics that are accessed with credentials. I told before that the URL are public, so if someone gets your URL, they can connect to it 
and they can send messages through it but if you have uh, put some sort of authentication of some sort of credentials this would not be this would not be allowed so the library already exposes some interfaces some functions that you can provide your username or your password they are encrypted in base may in base base 64 so it's very important that you use HTTPS because it's plain text right and there are others there are other minor minor features as well like Android disabling Firebase and uh, cache this is here this here is for the official server owner so let's see this a few look uh, a few of examples before we finish our presentation the first one will be with github workflows as i said before we can receive the notification after the deployment of a github project okay it's it's quite straightforward because it's quite simple you just need to add a new github action and in this new github action she m must be possible she must be able to make an http request and we have to set up it with our notify parameters so here is an example of my github i have created this action that whenever is is successfully deployed i send a notification to my to my topic and i receive this notification with my library it's very simple this here it's another example with uh, windows service whenever the service is start or whenever the server starts because the machine has started and uh, someone has logged in the machine i send a notification that someone has logged in the machine so here it's how can we utilize it with our library very simple you have logged on your PC at a certain date and a simple title. Here's another example of a notification with support with to an action button. Any device with support for opening the geolocation URL can redirect the user for this specific app, for example, Google Maps and so forth. So this one is Google Maps you have a view action and this other one it's also in a view action that all oh, it's utilized to open the gmail depending on this urls this protocols geolocation or mail you can direct your app to open the specific app application you want right very simple And here it's an example of how we can send files with our library. The files I was already mentioned they are stored in the server up until three hours, which is enough time to the user to download. And it's very simple as well. We just need to inform the file where where our file is. We just need to inform the path where our file is, and then use our attach file function with the value after this we just need to publish i forgot to put here but you already understood so that's it my friends i really hope have you have enjoyed it thank you for watching and uh, again sorry for my pronunciation any mistakes of my grammar i hope you have understood me and let's pass to the Q&A session now if you have any question you can just put in the chat we will we will we'll love to hear from you any feedback and uh, I hope you have really enjoyed thank you so much we see you on the next one Hello, oh, what a fantastic presentation. I really enjoyed that. I, you know, Delphicons had so many good uh, uh, presentations, but that's one uh, I found particularly useful. And I'm going to uh, use that, um, I think, probably in my own projects. I, I, it wasn't a project I knew about until um, Delphicon earlier in the week when we talked about it. 
Um, we're just getting a little, there we go. They've just sorted it out. Some gremlins in the background. The producers are uh, nagging people to turn things on. Okay, well, uh, the good news is uh, it's been a very lively Q&A, and I've actually got Samuel and Dion uh, both joining me live. Okay, so um, I, I've actually got my own question, um, and I didn't ask it in the window, but uh, to me, this looks actually quite similar to MQTT. Um, MQTT, for those that don't know, is a similar kind of um, notification protocol where you subscribe to uh, things. It's used in, in uh, IoT, Internet of Things uh, applications quite a lot, and there have been a few articles on it. Would you say that's probably a fair description, that it's a kind of similar thing to MQTT? Well, it's a bit similar to MQTT, but the mechanism is it's, it's, uh, actually even more simple because it's only plain HTTP, you know? Yeah. So it's even more simple. I, I like that. Uh, just, just plain HTTP and HTTPS. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, and, and I also got that if people want to uh, use this on mobile, they can use the client um straight away and that will work but the server there's still some work um, ongoing with that is that right yes uh, actually there is no server option for windows but in applications uh, it actually it's only a library a client library and it's not a server library the server uh -huh. is actually made in go and uh, you have to have another client connected to the of course to, to the server so <laughs> it's very, very simple. I just have to say that's very, very simple. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was impressed at how simple it was. And that's the thing that, um, you know, with anonymous uh, methods or anonymous functions as you was using, uh, it makes it very straightforward to create it. And I like the initial demo where you were doing it as a console app and, and making it. I, I think you did an excellent demo. I had some brilliant ideas like uh, having a service that notifies people you've just logged on. I, I love that. Uh, that, that's the ultimate um, spying tool, I think, for people saying, ah, ah, they've logged onto their computer, so I know I can message them. <laughs> Send it out as a service. Uh, uh, I think yes, uh, I demonstrated um, with a simple console application, but actually the library has another DCL application that you can run and, and try to have a playground as well. Brilliant. It's really good. Um, I'm going to go through some of the questions, apart from many, many people saying hello to us. And Patrick Primatan and uh, Dania suggested instead of saying hello to every country that's doing, we should just say hello world, which I thought was a genius thing for a, uh, to say to a bunch of programmers. And let's have a look. Okay, so um, Raphael said, "Is this a kind of message broker?" Kind of, I suppose. Yes. The, the, we can, you can utilize for messages as a message broker as well, but the intent is just to push notifications. You can utilize for a kind of message broker. Yeah. And, and uh, I think you answered this question during the um, presentation where he said, uh, am I able to actually create my own NTFI server? And I think you said, yes, you can. You can. You can create a server on a Linux machine or uh, Mac OS. But in Windows, you have to utilize a Docker image because there is no server option for Windows. Yeah, excellent. And another question was, how does authentication work? And also, how do you specify the, the host name for a custom server? So. If someone writes um, writes a, a, an app, what's to stop people, you know, seeing the traffic going out and then trying to? Uh, I'm guessing it's encrypted anyway. But uh, um, what's to stop people just joining your server and sending messages, and then all of your uh, your clients are suddenly getting alerts from buy my new thing, you know, <laughs> subscribe to this horrible uh, gambling site or something ridiculous like that? Is there some form of authentication? There is an uh, authentication interface where you can put your username and your password. As I said in the, in the presentation, the authentication is actually a basic authentication. We have no OAuth authentication. You just you put your username, your password, you encrypt the everything on base 64, and that is transmitted to the network. But you have to utilize it to PS, of course, because yeah. it's plain <laughs> text. Yeah, so to stop it being intercepted, HTTPS is the thing to do. And I, I think uh, when I've used MQTT, uh, what I've done is actually encrypted the packets. So uh, whatever I was sending, if it was a string or something like that, I actually encrypted it and then had a, a little um, 
um, of its own token. I think I use a JWT token or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that I, I actually built on top of that protocol and added my own authentication. So yeah, you could subscribe to my uh, my um, uh, server, but it wouldn't help you at all. You 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 couldn't read what I'd been sending back as a forward. And because of that authentication token that I built into it, um, if someone did intercept that traffic. It, it wouldn't help them because they wouldn't be able to send it out and the clients then filter out the things that aren't authenticated. So I, I think um, the basis is quite simple and then maybe you build on top, you know, your own uh, kind of technology. Um, Patrick, uh, our very hardworking MVP, who was always in the, the chat rooms and uh, I, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't sleep because we're always quite late. He said, is there any max quota of usage on a server except the operating system and sockets available? You did answer it. Exactly. I'm not very sure. I'm not very sure, but I, I remember it's quite uh, quite max, actually much lower than Firebase. But you know, for notification services, you're not going to need much. And it depends on two things. It depends on the bandwidth. If you abuse the bandwidth, you will start sending large files, large images, and and the server, the official server, will actually block you. And uh, I think there is a limit of almost 20,000 or 70,000 messages per day, something like this. Right. I don't know, but it's quite high. For a notification yeah. service, it's a note, you know. And of course, if you're hosting your own server and it's your own bandwidth, then there, you know you can uh, decide that there isn't a limit, and, uh, or however you want to limit. Them. And I guess that overcomes that. If yeah. you want to store lots of big files, then go ahead. But it's your bandwidth for. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it you could can be, read a little bit on their, yes, you can read yeah. a little bit on their documentation. They know how to, they explain you how to set up your servers with your desired limits. But this is everything on the documentation I cannot remember right now. Yeah, no, I'm always the same. I, I kind of know things and then my head fills up and it starts to spill out and I forget something. So, <laughs> yeah, it's very, very interesting. I, 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 like I say, I hadn't come across this project before, but I did hear about it earlier in the week and thought, Wow, that's good. And I looked at it and I've starred the repo. Anybody else uh, who is uh, interested in this should also go to the repository. Um, I did actually make a note of what it was. Let me just, is it uh, Hazelnuts? Is that your repo or is it someone yes. else's? Sorry. That's yours. Okay, well, yeah. that's you. Okay, well, I'm going to um, add that so that I can actually uh, put that up on the screen like that. That's your repo, is it? Is that correct? Delta. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Okay, I, I didn't want to publicize anybody else who suddenly uh, um, forked your uh, your repo or something like that. I mean, I'm glad they fork it, but let's uh, let's make sure you guys get the uh, the uh, the stars and the uh, kudos for it. Okay, so let's have a look. What else? I did start some other questions. Um, I think you covered this in the um, questions and answers anyway. But what happens if the server connection is broken? Um, does the library try to reconnect automatically? This is from Foswap yet, uh, is also an MVP. Um, is the application code notified? No, the application is not notified. And uh, this is uh, this is not meant to be implemented in the library. I can do this as well. And actually, all the persons want to contribute. But for the while, you can use a call option where you can only send one request and then you disconnect. And then it will, you can put a timer or something like that that stays open. Get short call and optimize and explain it. But if the server is broke, the application will simply stop receiving a notification. It's not meant to display anything that uh, right. it has stopped. But this is something yeah. to be improved. Yeah. And MQTT, which is a similar thing, has a quality of service. Uh, it's called a QoS. And you can then say, just send this, try and send this once and give up if it doesn't work. Uh, try and send it repeatedly uh, with a number of times. And the last one is send it until it definitely comes back and works. And I, I think um, if people are looking for something that's a guaranteed protocol, then maybe MQTT is more for what they're looking for. But this is more about notifications. It's your best efforts to get the notifications out. But if the server doesn't work and it's crashed, then it's like UDP. You send the packets out, but there's no... Uh, real acknowledgement. Yeah, no yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a, which actually makes it simpler because you don't have to look for anything because you just send it. And, and more fast. Yeah. yeah, which I, I like. Recession, that's a similar question. Oh, I think you answered this question as well. 
Um, what port is used because of firewalls? They wanted to know how, uh, which port to configure. Well, ISIS HTTPS it works on port 443. Normal HTTPS and I would find any any HTTPS work on, on this on the port. And uh, I'm not reminded, but you, I think you can configure this in the server as well. We have to take a look on that. Yeah. So so uh, I'll just recap what you're saying. Um, because it's HTTPS, the standard port for that is 443, and um, that's how uh, SSL works, and that's how, how HTTPS works. And uh, if you want to try a different port, it's probably not going to work for certainly for browsers and things like that. That's not how that they're designed to um, work. Yeah. It's, it's theoretically possible to send encrypted traffic down any port, really, at the end of the day. But uh, And the, the other thing as well is that, I've said this before in a different presentation. If you're having trouble implementing SSL, then you can use a reverse proxy. Um, like Nginx will actually do the reverse proxy for you. You can then um, proxy the HTTPS port out. Though so if uh, you, you can talk HTTPS, but your server can't support it for whatever reason, um, or you can't uh, get the SSL certificate onto the right place, um, you can use a reverse proxy and it will move the traffic around and then point to your server. You can also use um, Let's Encrypt for the SSL as well, so you can get the certificate from there. But um, really, the open uh, SSH, uh, open um, SSL uh, uh, libraries cope with all that kind of stuff anyway. That's what it's there for. So. And as you said, um, you do actually use that um, with your your apps. So, uh, what's the other one? Quite, I didn't quite understand what this question was. It, um, what is well, OTP? One time, one time password. You can control ah, OTP with, okay. with, this, <laughs> with this library. It works pretty well. But one time password is totally different from uh, from uh, the, the focus of the presentation. You can couple with it, like to generate an OTP to the client. And you send in, you can use notify to display him in his client that the, the OTP password and you can couple it. It, it, it actually it's an, another idea, great idea to do this. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. And I and I think uh, what I like about this is that it's almost a kind of independent solution. Um, because you can run your own server and you you know you've got all the code there to to uh, create the server and you've got the code, the entire source code for the client as well. I really like this idea because I like the idea of the concept of owning the end-to-end -end solution rather than relying on Firebase, which you know, may or may not be around forever. Uh, and I, I, I really like this solution. I think the project is great. I think what, you know, the code that you've done is, is a, extremely interesting and, uh, and I'm definitely going to look into it. I am actually working on a project at the moment that could use these notifications. And one of the things I was just looking at was one-time passwords. So I think you just uh, solved a couple of problems for me there. So that's that's great. Um, we're running out of time, um, but thanks a lot, guys. As as ever, Dion is always here, and he's like some. Uh, Thank you, John, for uh, uh, coming as well, supporting me. Yeah, Samuel yeah. asked for my help, but he could still talk all by himself. Is is his first international lecture, Dion? Is so it really? Well, really? don't make it your last because that was an absolutely excellent presentation. Uh, you know, really good job, and, and it's a lot of fun to um, see this. And, uh, and uh, as I say, the great thing about DelphiCon is I've been a developer for 38 years. Uh, there's not much I haven't seen. I've worked in COBOL and Unix and all sorts of weird things. And I do not stop learning. Uh, every single day that something comes up, DelphiCon this week has been, there's been a lot of good sessions. And this session is one of the ones that I particularly enjoyed. So thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Thank you, John. Yeah. I okay. All right. In the chat, and if you have any questions, I, I will. Sorry. I yes. Know. Stick around and I'll answer the questions because the, uh, um, you know, we will uh, turn your video off so that you can uh, actually live a life and do some things without worrying that everybody's going to watch. But, um, but uh, answering the questions is perfect.